Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. Wanted to show you a unique piece of wood. It's a North American wood. Grows mostly in the Northeast, but has been found in lots of different places around the country. It is a very I guess I call it an ancient wood in regards to its uses. It's called sassafras. It has been used for herbal remedies. They use the roots, the bark, the leaves. Even the leaves are used in culinary dishes today in Louisiana for filet gumbo. It is a ring porous wood. What does that mean? That means it has an open grain, sort of like oak and chestnut, ash, hickory. It's lighter weight, it's softer, and if you notice, it doesn't have the pronounced rays, medullar rays or medullary rays. You don't see that much in chestnut or in Sassafras, you see it sometimes a little bit in ash, but you definitely see those rays in oak and most definitely in white oak. So today, I wanted to plane this down and show you the grain. So I started at first with my wooden plane with just a single iron in it. And it cut perfectly. Okay? No chip breaker was necessary as long as you're going with the grain. Alright, you get nice clean, crisp shavings and a polished surface. Once again, when people say that, you know, they don't have the money to get into hand planing, I just go back to this little handmade jack slash smoother, and I can show them I can take off heavy cuts with it, or I can take it down with a few taps of the hammer to a very fine finish. That brings up a question. How fine does your plane have to be set to be considered a smoothing cut? Well, I don't think it's so much how fine the plane has to be set as opposed to the finish that you're getting. If you can take off a thick shaving all right, take off a thick shaving like that that's a pretty heavy shaving Two, three thousandths, two, three thousandths, something like that. If you can take off a heavy shaving and leave an acceptable surface, you're done. If, however, you're not getting that surface that you want, then you need to back it off or go to a smoothing plane. Let's give this one more time across the heavy cut. Get rid of those pencil lines and we know we have a flat surface. That's it. So there's some plane tracks there because that blade's not severely cambered. 
I don't know if you can see the plane tracks or not, but this is what a plane track is. Let's see. There's a line stopping the pencil from moving right there, right there, right there. Easily remedied. With a finely set jack plane, or smoother, you get rid of those plane tracks. And this time around, you're using a blade that's been cambered slightly. So you should not have any plane tracks. Might be a little one there. So that's sassafras. Here's what the edge grain looks like. There you go. Looks a lot like oak and ash when you plane it. The one thing you will know when you're planing sassafras is the smell. They make sassafras tea. Sassafras was used in one of the original recipes for root beer it smells wonderful I really wish you could smell this there's a lot of aromatic woods out there woods that have oils in them resins in them that wake up your senses. I mean even pine does to some degree. I'm just trying to hit the high spots here now. Not trying to take too much off. Just feathers. So I don't know what you have in your local community or your country that's just a pleasure to work we don't see too much sassafras exactly where I live but I forget where I got this I got this about 20-25 years ago and it's been sitting waiting to be worked this whole time and the deeper down into it I get the more fragrant. Sassafras was also used by settlers for fence posts and other things where you need some rot resistance. I did notice that on this side, when I was leveling this side, there are some powder post beetle holes. Don't know when those were started, but that is the, the outside of the tree. This would be the closest area, this cathedral here, actually if I turn it this way we can call it a cathedral. This cathedral here would have been the closest this board was to the outside of the tree. So you see that's where the wormholes are. Because the sapwood of the tree is where the sugar is. The food for the tree that pushes the leaves out, that causes the stem to grow. And the bugs like the sugar. That's why if you're inoculating a tree against a pest, like the emerald ash borer, the inoculation only goes out in the sapwood. It goes in the cambium layer in the sapwood where the bugs would bite in and they'd get it and they'd either die or they don't like it. Well, enough of that. That's about it for today. Hope you like that. Sassafras. It's amazing how many people would mistake that 
for some form of light brown ash or even chestnut. But the minute you cut into it, you'll know that you have something different. Head out to your shop. Find an unusual piece of wood and make some shavings. Walter out.